Uh, this is lecture 18. Uh, we talked about the forming of the Constitution last time. I want to talk about the emergence of political parties. Uh, I mentioned last time that the, uh, the founders uh, looked very skeptically uh, upon political parties, believing that they served a narrow interest instead of a wider national interest. So we need to have some idea why uh, our, the original party, the Federalist Party, why it broke up and a two-party system was created. The, um, probably the two major reasons uh, would be the French Connection, the French Connection, the French Revolution, uh, I just slipped in one of my favorite movies there, uh, the French Revolution which is taking place uh, obviously in France and uh, a second big reason for the emergence of political parties is probably the uh, uh, Hamilton's financial uh, plans for the young republic. So the French Revolution um, and I'm going to use Hamilton and Jefferson as many teachers do to illustrate this division, this emerging split uh, among the, uh, the Federalists. The French Revolution forced the founders to, uh, to take sides. And uh, while we're on this, let me emphasize that the French Revolution is uh, the larger European context for uh, the early republic. Uh, the French Revolution begins in 1789. Uh, George Washington is first elected president in 1789. Um, the revolution extends through the wars of Napoleon all the way to 1815, uh, the conclusion of the War of 1812 for the, United, for the Americans. So the French Revolution, the wars of the revolution, Napoleon, uh, this is a large uh, sort of Atlantic and European context for the early American Republic. Uh, Hamilton, um, as President Washington's chief advisor and Secretary of the Treasury uh, was very fearful that the mob rule, uh, the violence um, that was being demonstrated in France uh, could make its way here. Uh, he preferred a much more orderly society, one with a strong central government, uh, a commercial uh, country that he envisioned uh, with strong currency and uh, tariffs to raise money and, and so on and so forth. He, um, so therefore he was quite fearful of uh, the chaos that was taking place in France. Jefferson on the other hand had actually served as an American minister to France uh, during the early stages of the revolution and Jefferson was much more um, favorable to what was going on in France. Jefferson saw the French Revolution as a natural um, progression from the American Revolution and therefore was quite sympathetic uh, to the ideas that were uh, taking place in Paris. So the revolution began to push the founders uh, into different camps uh, based on how they felt about it. Uh, Hamilton's financial program, uh, another issue that tended to divide the founders. Like I said, Hamilton envisioned a, a commercial giant uh, in the young republic, he wanted to, uh, he tended to favor the moneyed interest, the, the industrial sector of the country. Uh, Jefferson did not. Jefferson favored the farmer, of course. Uh, Jefferson envisioned a, uh, a republic dotted by uh, autonomous farmers, self-sufficient, uh, virtuous. Hamilton um, saw the United States competing in a, wi a wider world, Atlantic world of commerce. Uh, so these two men had quite different um, outlooks and visions for the country. Now Hamilton's financial plan called for an assumption of all the state debts uh, as the country emerged uh, from the revolution and then uh, following the Constitution and the first administration of George Washington, Hamilton looked at the various state debts and decided it would be best uh, to consolidate those debts and to assume them for him. To, to assume them as the Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, he wanted to do this for a couple of reasons. One, it would create one national debt instead of um, 13 separate state debts. And some of the states had actually paid the debt off, uh, including Virginia, I believe. Hamilton also 
wanted to demonstrate um, a powerful central government that could assume the debts of the country, that could pay on these debts, and to establish credit. Uh, Hamilton said that the United States is basically bankrupt and we have no credit. Uh, if we can assume a debt and then demonstrate our ability to pay on that debt, uh, we can establish credit, which will allow us to borrow money. Uh, Hamilton wanted to get the, um, the merchant class, the, uh, uh, the money people in the country that have a stake in the government. He wanted to get them involved in the success of the government. And um, so his financial plans uh, pointed toward a more powerful centralized government that was perhaps more favorable to uh, the commercial class, uh, the mercantile class, than it was to the agricultural class. This, of course, frightened many of the Southerners, including uh, Thomas Jefferson, obviously, who favored agriculture instead of industry. Uh, Jefferson looked at Hamilton's plan and thought, well, here we have uh, the most powerful man in the government after Washington uh, as an open proponent for industry uh, and commerce over agriculture. And Jefferson didn't believe that the government had any right to favor one sector of the economy over another. So there's fundamental, uh, fundamental disagreement here. Uh, later in the uh, administration of John Adams, you'll have the passage of the Alien and Sedition Acts, uh, which will also further divide uh, the Federalist and the emerging Anti-Federalist under Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson's party is going to go by a lot of different names. I don't want to confuse you, so let's just stick with Federalist and Anti-Federalist for the moment. So we have the e beginning uh, emergence of these two uh, factions within the government. The um, other differences between Hamilton and Jefferson, we'll go into them now. Jefferson uh, and Hamilton were both uh, born of the Enlightenment. Jefferson's ideas about individual autonomy, uh, about self-sufficiency, uh, public virtue, uh, st are still uh, debated today as Hamilton's ideas about commerce, about um, a stable currency, about tariffs to shield domestic manufacturing and to raise money for the government. Uh, these things are still uh, debated today. This, these issues have not gone away. Uh, we're entering a campaign season now and if you listen to the Republicans and the Democrats discuss the issues you will find that they quite often talk about the role of government and uh, the role of uh, reducing the size of big government. Um, what should the government be, be involved in? What should it not be involved in? Uh, you see this, uh, this debate goes on interminably in this country. I want to talk about specifically differences. Uh, among these emerging factions, the, the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist. Uh, think of the Federalist as represented by Jeff I mean by uh, Hamilton. Think of the Anti-Federalist led by Thomas Jefferson. Uh, the Federalists tended to believe that the country should be ruled by the quote unquote best people. Uh, those people with a stake in the outcome of the government or in the success of the government. Uh, the mercantile interests, the people with money, uh, the people with social standing and, and leadership. Uh, Jefferson was much more uh, in tuned uh, to rule by the masses, the broad masses of people. The uh, Federalists were not uh, excited about the extension of democracy. Uh, they wanted to keep political power uh, closely held. Uh, Jefferson and the Anti-Federalists much more interested in extending uh, democracy to all white men. Of course, Hamilton favored a very strong central government. Uh, he believed it was necessary to have a strong central government in order to compete successfully uh, with the great powers in Europe. Um, Jefferson, of course, believed that um, the power should be spread more thinly. Uh, he believed that power should lie at the state level as well as the federal level. And of course, federalism is this notion of um, power dispersed from central government to the states. So again, Hamilton and Jefferson are at odds on where their power should flow back to Washington 
or whether power should be dispersed among the various states. Uh, Hamilton uh, favored a very loose interpretation of the Constitution. This would give him wiggle room uh, to use the Constitution to his advantage or to the advantage of the uh, industrial or moneyed class. Uh, Jefferson, on the other hand, favored a strict interpretation of the Constitution, whereby if the Constitution didn't say it, then you couldn't do it. Um, this would allow uh, state interest, state power, uh, to at least have an equal or uh, even a predominant voice in the affairs of the people. Uh, so there's a basic disagreement here on how to read the central document. Uh, Hamilton wanted to use the government to foster business and, and um, capitalistic enterprises. Uh, of course, Jefferson did not favor this. He didn't think that uh, the government should favor one interest over another. And of course, Jefferson was a large farmer and favored the autonomous, virtuous, uh, independent farmer. Hamilton, of course, was pro-British. And as we discussed earlier, Jefferson was pro-French. Hamilton believed the national debt was a blessing if it was properly funded. Uh, like I said earlier, Hamilton's financial program depended in part upon assuming the debts of the states, paying on that debt, establishing credit, again, creating a more powerful central government that can borrow money. Um, for Jefferson, the national debt was kind of like the individual who bounces checks and uh, r uh, runs his uh, spending beyond his pocketbook. Uh, he, he didn't quite envision the uh, more sophisticated financial uh, analysis that ha Hamilton brought to this problem. Hamilton did not uh, object to an expanding central government. Uh, of course, Jefferson did. And finally, I think it's safe to say that there's a different geographic orientation between Hamilton and Jefferson, between the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist. Uh, Hamilton and the Federalists tended to be oriented to the East Coast, looking eastward across the Atlantic to Europe. Jefferson and the Anti-Federalists, on the other hand, tended to be oriented westward across the Alleghenies, uh, down into the Ohio Valley, to the Mississippi River and beyond. And of course, we'll see later when Jefferson is president that indeed we will extend, uh, we will double the size of the country with the Louisiana Purchase. So the Anti-Federalist and Jefferson are looking westward for uh, expansion and development of American institutions. Hamilton and the Federalists tend to look eastward uh, towards Europe for their models and for the uh, commercial life of the country. So these are some basic differences. Uh, I think it's safe to say in conclusion here that Jefferson favored uh, the creation of a merchant marine and a navy um, to protect American commerce. And again, Jefferson saw this as the government favoring one sector of the economy over another and uh, would object to this. Uh, Hammers, uh, Jefferson would object to the tariff because it was designed to protect northern manufacturing. Um, he said that this penalized southerners who would have to pay more for imported goods. And we will see this issue uh, uh, emerge again in the 1830s with the nullification crisis. So uh, the emergence of political parties uh, takes people by surprise, I think in the uh, beginning, though by 1800, um, uh, these two parties are quite firmly established and uh, we'll look at the uh, election of 1800 in our next lecture. Thank you.